Hello, everyone. Welcome to another one of our Tuesday Facebook Lives. I want to give everyone an update about Blueprint. Uh, I've gotten a lot of emails lately from all of you wondering where your classes are, if, you, if you're going to be able to buy new classes, how you get your classes, all of that. Well, we just got an announcement this week that Blueprint content has been sold to a company called TN Marketing out of Minneapolis. And starting in September, you will be hearing from them about the status of your account and what you own and how you will be able to access the classes that you own. And you will be able to buy new classes, as I understand it, and perhaps even brand new classes that you don't even know about yet. I, I'm not sure about that. But it sounds like things are going to be all good in the Craftsy Blueprint world and everybody's going to be happy. And it sounds like the, the new company is really gearing up to uh, really present themselves in a professional way and I'm excited about it. So just wanted you to know about the Blueprint update. All right, well today is a day of sort of fun, a little more of a trunk show, talking about something artistic, another way to express yourself uh, as you're sewing. So I have a little story to tell you. About 30 years ago, when I owned the sewing workshop school in San Francisco, one of the people who walked in the door was named Nancy Schreiber. Well, over the course of the last 30 years, she and I have become very good friends. She lives in Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C. area, and she's known for her hand stitching called Sashiko. She has a company called Contemporary Sashiko, and she teaches and writes about hand stitching in a very traditional Japanese manner on silk, primarily. So she and I have been team teaching, co-teaching, all over the country, as a matter of fact, all over the world. We've taught in France and then just every place all over the United States. And last year in France in August and last October, I believe it was, in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, she taught a class on stenciling using paint on fabric. And everybody who took the classes just loved it. So I'm going to show you some of the results of that class, her work and some student work as well, and then some things that I've done with it since then. If you're interested in knowing more about Nancy and her contemporary Sashiko work, you can check out the So Confident Series 5, and she has a, a tutorial within that series called Sashiko Tremont Vest. You'll be blown away by the work that she does, um, but she's a great teacher. She's going to be teaching a class for us here in Topeka in November on Contemporary Sashiko, and I'm sure we'll have other classes with Nancy in the future as well. But in the meantime, I had her send her garment that she made uh, for the classes last year. And this is her Berwick Street tunic. This is a painted garment. The stripe obviously is a shirting, so she didn't paint the little stripes, but she did paint the motif on the bottom. And she used a stencil <clears throat> in about three or four colors of paint, which I'm going to get into in a minute as to how she did it and what the paint is and all of that. This garment has, happens to be the same garment that I have on. I have it on in the out of the package way of making the Berwick Street tunic, which has a seam here, some pleats across the front, the placket just extends from the seam up to the neck. Um, it has a, a vent and a button here and a little stand collar. Just as an aside, I have a design that's been hand embroidered on this side of this garment. This is a little design that was designed by my daughter, Alex. While she was in London getting her master's, she designed an embroidery design that has the five iconic buildings of London on it. This design is something that you can download on our website, either for hand stitching or it has been machine digitized as well. So if you're a machine embroiderer, you can have this design as well. It's very inexpensive and it's just a fun project to do. But back to the Berwicks. So one of the things that I like about what she did with this Berwick Street tunic is you can see that she eliminated the seam, so she eliminated the pleats, and the placket and buttons extend from top to bottom. Another thing that I thought was interesting, if you're not interested in making a little vent on the sleeve, well, Nancy didn't do that. So she made the little cuff a little bit wider and just simply 
closed that up and eliminated one more step on the sleeve and made it even simpler. So then I asked three of my buddies from Kansas City to uh, lend me their garments that they made. They were in Eureka Springs last fall doing the workshop. So I want to show you some work by three of my friends. This is Mary Lou Busby, Kansas City. And this is the London shirt. Now the London shirt is a little more oversized shirt than the Berwick Street tunic. You can see that it has the seams that come forward and the back is uh, coming around to the front. This is in a linen fabric. And she's done some great stenciling down the front and along the back. These great elephants, they fun. And then of course she found the perfect buttons to go in the center of each of the uh, button placements. So that's Mary Lou. Marilyn Barbeck made this one. This is another London shirt. Now this is the fabric that we've really been promoting recently and it's the linen and viscose combo. So it has the overall look of linen but with the rayon viscose in it. It doesn't wrinkle in the same way. It has a lot of drape to it. We really love this fabric and it's a great fabric to print, stamp, paint on. It accepts the paint really well. She's used a very delicate almost Asian design. This was a stencil and gone back in and done a little bit of hand painting on it, but I love the delicacy of this. I also think that her buttons are amazing. The buttons just go with this motif of this stencil beautifully. But I like this, this very simple but slightly Asian style garment. And then Donna Schmoller did her rendition of the Berwick Street tunic. Again, she eliminated the seam and the pleats and carried the uh, placket clear down the front with some hidden buttons. And she's used a stencil uh, in more of a border-like approach and just used a simple um, pewter paint. And I love this, just on the front, not on the back. But I think these garments are fantastic. I also made a London shirt in the white linen and viscose and I used two different more contemporary stencils and I used a couple three colors black and gray and of course my favorite green and then after I stenciled it I came back in and did some hand embroidery both in the green and the black sort of sashiko like you know influenced by Nancy Schreiber and her contemporary sashiko work but these are just straight lines I first drew the lines using a friction uh, a pen, and then after I stitched it, I was able to press it, and the, the uh, lines went away. But I just did a whole border along the back and the front of the London shirt, and also on the folded cuff, which took just a little bit of calculation to figure out where to put to the design uh, so that I knew how to paint, and knowing that the, the cuff would be folded up and folded under and all of that, and I wanted just a certain part of the stencil to show. And the black buttons, I think, kind of set this off. This is a, an off the topic here, but I want to tell you about something. So I'm accustomed to interfacing a collar. And I was home making this, and I don't have everything at home that I have here. And the only interfacing that I had is our Japanese Ultra Sheer interfacing, which is, of course, my favorite interfacing. But the only color that I had was the nude, which I thought was just the universal color to use on everything. And so that's what I used. Now, I don't think that you can probably pick this up on camera, particularly today, but I know in looking at this that not using white was a problem on this collar. There's a slight difference in shading between this white and this white because of the interfacing. So it's probably better to use no interfacing or another layer of something else like silk organza, but you want to test your interfacing first on your fabric before you commit to it and stand back and look at it in different lights and make sure that what you have is the right color. Because now this bothers me for some reason. It's kind of minor, but still, it bothers me. Then, over the weekend, I decided to use the same stencil that Donna used, and I made myself a pair of mimosa pants. 
We don't talk about our mimosa pants very often. I can't tell you why. I guess I get so used to thinking about elastic waist pants that I forget that we have pants that don't have elastic. But our mimosa pants are more fitted. There are darts in the front, darts in the back. I've installed an invisible zipper. And I have to say, I nailed this zipper. You know, every once in a while, you, you stand back and you say, ah, I did the right thing. It really worked. I don't have a little blip at the bottom of this zipper. It's very flat. It's great. Normally, the zipper's on the side of this, on the left-hand side of this pattern, but I put it in the back. I think that's uh, sort of a uh, insurance. If you don't get the zipper just exactly right at the bottom of the zipper on an invisible zipper and you have a little blip, it's probably not going to show, and it's going to be smoother because you're going to sew the side seams the same on each side. But I just used the same sort of floral, viney uh, stencil just as the bottom. And I did about five colors of metallic paint. Now this is on a very nice, lightweight, white denim. This doesn't have any stretch to it. We do have a white denim that has lycra, but this is the denim that we have that does not have lycra. And I just really like the feel of this. It was very smooth, so the paint went on really well. And I think for a summer pant, oh, by the way, I shortened this uh, pant. It's a full-length pant in the pattern, and I shortened it to a more cropped length. So I'm really pleased with this. I'm excited to figure out what to wear on top of it. Mimosa pants. So how do you do all this? Well, Nancy was the one that introduced me to a company called TCW Stencils. And this is what they look like. They're just a nice uh, Templar type plastic that are obviously cut out. And when you go to a website called thecraftersworkshop.com, you will get lost for hours in the hundreds and hundreds of stencils that they have. Now, obviously, there are stencils to be purchased at Hobby Lobby and Joanne Fabrics and your local craft stores. But their stencils are really interesting and really different and range from uh, florals to geometrics to modern to vintage and just anything that you would want, I think you would find there. So that's the source for the stencils. The kind of paint that Nancy recommends is two different varieties. One is called PBO, P-E-B-E-O. And you can get this at a couple of places. I'm going to give you sources in a minute. The other one, and these are the ones that I use because some of them are metallic, is Lumiere by Jacquard. So here are the sources that I just mentioned. The stencils came from the craft, thecraftersworkshop.com. The paint is called PBO and Lumiere. And you can get those at either dharmatrading.com or dickblick.com. Now, I'm going to tell you just briefly how I did it. It's so easy, I don't even know that I need to tell you how to do this. But uh, you want to wash your fabric first, get it kind of prepared, and get whatever finish is on the fabric off of it. And then I taped. Well, in the case of the pants, I went ahead and sewed the side seam because I wanted the motif to, to be over the seam. So I sewed the side seams, and then I taped the pants down on my cutting surface with some painter's tape. And then I, I placed the stencil on top of the fabric and taped that to the fabric. And then I did a little bit of experimenting first, not on the pants of what tool I was going to use to apply the paint. First of all, the paint is diluted just a little bit with water, not a lot. It kind of depends on how old the paint is. But you know, you choose your variety of either brush types, large, small, sponge brushes. But on this, I actually used a uh, makeup sponge, which you can buy at your local uh, drugstore. And it worked just great. But I had that all figured out before I actually put the paint to the pants. Once I let that dry, and I let it dry for about 24 hours, then I heat set it. I used a, a sheer piece of silk organza as a press cloth on top of the fabric. So I was able to 
heat set the paint in place. And so now it's washable and it's really, really, it, the paint is just good enough that you will not have to worry about it going away. It's going to stay there now that it's this kind of paint and the heat set process. For the stitching that I did on this garment, I just used regular embroidery floss. You can use DMC or any brand that you have. Uh, we happen to have some Alabama Channon flosses here that are by Anchor, actually. And I used um, three, I believe I used three strands to do my embroidery, but that again is a little bit of an experiment as to how you want, how bold you want the stitches to be. So let's say you're not into stencils at all. You're home this weekend and you have a little paint on hand and you don't have a stencil, but you want to do a bit of painting. So there's a person by the name of Sarah Campbell who lives in London and she's a world-renowned uh, textile designer. She was one of the uh, designers for the Liberty of London fabrics, the, the famous store in London called Liberty of London and now we know it sometimes as Liberty of London cotton fabrics beautiful designs. She had a company called Collier Campbell, which designed fabrics for mostly interiors. But uh, <clears throat> I uh, learned about her on our London textile tour a year ago, and we took a, a one-day class from her of fabric painting. And so we invited her to Topeka, and she came last February and did a week-long painting workshop, and it was so much fun. She has a fabulous website, by the way, and her name has an H Sarah, with an H, CampbellDesigns.com. I collect dolls. You know, you're never too old to have dolls. And this is one of her little dolls that she's used, the Liberty of London fabrics, to make the dolls. You can go to her website and find beautiful fabrics, bits of fabric that you can use in your garments or quilts or other little items like bags and dolls and whatever. But I'm going to show you what she used as, I'll call them drop cloths, I had sent her some fabrics that I thought were appropriate for garment sewing and she did some experimenting on it and then she came and brought those fabrics and as she was demonstrating her various techniques, this, these were her samples. So I grabbed them of course, but look at this, isn't this fun? She's known for her bright colors and her, she can do florals and geometrics and all of this is free form, no stenciling just paint and brush, but she uses the same kind of paint that Nancy does. And I thought that was interesting, someone who's done this all of her life. So that one was on a piece of the silk and linen that I'm going to show you in a second. And this she experimented on the viscose linen. So I just love how even her samples are useful, and I'm trying to decide how to use this. So if anybody has any great ideas, you let me know. I can't decide what to make. Of course, I don't want to ruin it, but, you know, it's only fabric, so there you go. So Kathy Davis, who has worked here for years, um, and maybe you saw on um, one of the Facebook Lives of, uh, a few weeks ago, was in the class, and she did a London shirt and did not use a stencil, but used some gray linen fabric and just painted this design. Uh, several colors went over it with a little bit of metallic, but I think this is very interesting. Um, I think the red buttons really set this off. She has just little dabs of the rusty bronze. I think that was a Sarah Campbell edition. Kathy had painted pretty much the background in this dark char brown color and maybe thrown on a little bit of the gold and the white, but just wasn't quite there yet. And I think it was, I think it was Sarah who said, how about a little red? And the red to me just sets it off. And then the buttons just really make it. And then if you have a garment at home that you want to experiment on and sacrifice, Kathy took her Ralph Lauren t-shirt that she'd purchased, took some potatoes, cut them in half, and did a little bit of carving and so made a stamp out of potato, and these are her potato stamps on her cotton t-shirt. So this paint works on wovens, it works on knits, so you're not, um, you're not really limited to what you use. I was experimenting with just paint and brush 
free form. And so I was just playing around with what brush to use. I was playing with different widths of brushes. And I, this is, so this little strip of fabric right here, my three inches of fabric, is my sample piece of fabric. And I decided that I liked it well enough that I cut that up and added it to the front band of this skirt. This is our six cents skirt pattern. I love this pattern. I'm going to talk about this in another Facebook Live. This is basically two rectangles with a seam down the back. And so that's how you fit the garment, basically. You assemble it put a pocket on it that holds the overlap together and then you sew the seam to fit you and put the elastic in the waist. But this is the painted part. This fabric was, came like this. So that's the six cents skirt. All right, I want to show you some fabrics. We um, were having the white sale. I think white sales used to be in January, as I recall, where we bought our sheets and towels. Well, we're having a white sale in it's July, not January. And so we have an, a lot of white fabrics on sale this week. So I want to show them to you. Uh, one of my favorites is this white linen. And it has this little raised dot metallic dot. It's a little dot that has some metallic paint on it. You can see it's somewhat semi-sheer. And I made a vest out of it. This is from the Detour jacket pattern that's part of So Confident 2020. And the, I didn't put buttons on it or anything, but I did use some white silk charmeuse as a binding Hong Kong finish on the front of it. And I wanted to use facings, arms eye facings and yoke facings, and I didn't want to use the same fabric. This is a fabric that you need to press on the wrong side. Otherwise, the paint will disappear on the little dots on the face. But if you press it on the wrong side, you're fine. And so I didn't want to use the same fabric for the facing, so I used white silk organza for my facings, which is a good idea anyway, no matter what fabric you're using. But I just love this fabric, and this is one of the fabrics that's on sale. Speaking of samples, when I was in France, I was timid about actually getting paint on fabric. And so I did a little bit of stenciling on my Provence market bag pattern. So these are stripes that are stenciled first, and then these are bits of fabric that I added and did my sashiko running stitch with embroidery thread. So, you know, you can start with something small like this, a bag, and I think our Provence market bag is a really interesting shape. All right, back to fabrics. Good old white linen. You know, you have to have the white linen pants for summer. This is the perfect pant weight linen. This is on sale as well. This is the wash linen that we've been promoting all summer. We have it in a lot of colors, but great, perfect white linen to paint on or not. We have another linen that is similar weight. It's also super drapey. This has been washed, and this has a sort of bursting, reminds me of the 4th of July in a way but a burst of color. This looks like you've stenciled it, but I, I actually considered using this as a fabric to stencil over. Take another design and stencil over this and have some fun with adapting and expanding this already really cool design. So that fabric is on sale. This is a woven linen, white with a black thread through it pinstripe, not particularly regular, not anything you would have to match. So even though it's a stripe, and it is a vertical stripe, this is not something that you would have to worry about in terms of matching. This is the fabric that I have been talking about that we have in several colors. We have it in olive and black and rose color and some sort of a interesting kind of rosy nude color, I think. But this is the silk and linen. Now this comes off the bolt crisp. And you think to yourself, I don't know what I'd use that for. But when you wash this, this is fabulous. This is drapey. 
It makes the perfect pants or shirt or jacket or whatever. So, and it's a wonderful, wonderful base for painting as I demonstrated because it is one of the pieces that Sarah Campbell painted on. So consider this fabric and remember to wash it. It is a little bit narrower than normal fabric. Uh, I don't know about normal fabric, but uh, a lot of our fabrics are wider than this, so remember that. On our website, of course, we always have the content, the origin of the fabric, and the width of the fabric, so it's not going to be a mystery to you. This is Egyptian cotton sateen. Oh, this is really, really, really nice. Anytime you have a woven selvage like this, you can tell that the fabric is nice, uh, but there's, the Egyptian cotton is a beautiful cotton, and this has a nice, nice uh, semi-glossy, uh, it's not glossy, but um, sheen to it. That's a better word. It has a nice sheen to it, and it's the perfect surface for painting, and it would just make a great white shirt. This is another color. It's not white, but I had to... Had to show it to you anyway because this is Nancy Schreiber's favorite color on earth, I think. This is the linen viscose. You can see how drapery this is. And this hasn't even been washed yet, but it washes beautifully. And again, this is the same substrate that uh, Nancy has used, I've used, and Sarah Campbell used as well. So if you're not into white, this is a little bit of a nude, uh, natural color that makes a great background. Don't forget about knits. For a while, we didn't have any white knit on hand. Now we have white, off-white, and this is a beautiful, beautiful viscose. I think this is viscose. I need to make sure that maybe it's not cotton. It feels like cotton, but I'm pretty sure it's viscose. Yes, 92% viscose, 8% spandex. And then I couldn't resist showing you, you know, the, the classic awning stripe black and white, which even if you don't think you want to wear this bold of a stripe as a total garment, just add it to parts of your garment. This could be bands, cuffs, uh, peplums. Put it on the diagonal on the bias and create a little different design. Run the stripes in different directions, both vertically and horizontally. It's a nice cotton piece, beautiful feel to it, and it'd be fun to paint over. So you subdue the stripe a little bit. All right, have I shown everything? I think I have. Do we have any questions today? We do. Okay. So do you wash before you paint on the silk and linen? Do I wash before I paint on the silk and linen? And the answer is yes. Every fabric gets washed before you paint on it. Machine wash, yes. Machine wash and dry. My, my actual uh, process is to machine wash and dry my fabrics first, even though I might not necessarily do that to the garment, or I might not dry. I might just launder in the machine and not actually machine dry a fabric. But the first time around, that's what I do to a fabric. Could you hold up the... Um... Here's, here are the sources again. Yeah. The source for the stencils and the paint. Okay. Um, when you wash it, do you wash it in regular detergent or um, do you use a softener or no softener? Um, or do you use something like Synthrapol um, like you do with dyeing? When I wash the fabric, what do I use? I use whatever has been purchased at the grocery store, which is usually nothing special. I don't use a softener, and I do use a, a dryer sheet when I'm drying it, but in the washing process, there's nothing special about it. How do they wash up after you paint them? How do they wash up after you paint them? Beautifully. The paint, after you heat set, you let it dry for 24 hours, and then you heat set it. That paint is going to be there. It's, it holds up just fine. That's the difference in some of these quality paints than, other than uh, over other lesser brands, I'll call them. Um, sorry, a lot of these questions have been answered, so I just want to make sure. Um, do we have any new ones? Okay. Um, 
and the stencil and what you're wearing today? Okay, I'm wearing uh, the Berwick Street tunic and the stencil design is the London skyline, the five iconic buildings of London. And this is available on our website as a hand embroidered design or a machine embroidered design. You can choose which one. I believe it's five dollars for the design. It's a download. You download the design. Is that right? And then eight dollars for the uh, machine. Oh, eight dollars for the machine version. Yes. I have a friend, uh, Karna, in western Kansas who in my opinion is the best digitizer in the world and whenever I need something digitized she's she's the girl so it's digitized really well if you're a machine embroiderer. Okay, um, when you pre-wash do you stitch your raw edges? When I pre-wash do I stitch my raw edges? Um, no because I'm lazy if I'm not as lazy then I might evaluate the fabric you should on linen, actually. Linen can get pretty ravelly, and you can lose an inch or so of the fabric, and the you know, threads get all tangled up and all of that. Um, knits, I don't. Uh, but it's a good idea. I'm just lazy and tend not to do it. <laughs> um, how long do you heat set the painted fabric? How long do you heat set the painted fabric? It's just sort of normal uh, pressing time, nothing um, more than a few seconds. Uh, maybe 10 seconds at the most. It's, a, it's similar to something like applying fusible interfacing, about that long. But I do use the press cloth, the silk organza press cloth, over the work. So I'm protecting both the work and my iron. Okay, and the metallic dot on white linen, is it a warm or a cool metallic? The dot on the metallic, is it a warm or a cool dot? I would say it's more warm. It's more like an antique brass. Yeah. Do I turn the painted side to the inside when I wash the garment? Mm -hmm. No. I just wash the garment. And then what patterns are on sale this week? What patterns are on sale this week? Good question. The London shirt which you've seen four or five times here, the Berwick Street tunic, the mimosa pants. Okay. Is that? We'll yeah. That. We'll yeah, yeah. And the uh, <laughs> six cent skirt and the Provence market bag. Now, these patterns, the, the London, the Berwick Street, are also available as download patterns. So if, a print, if they're a printed pattern, they are now $18. If they're a download pattern, they are now $12. The six cents pattern is now $12. And the Provence market bag is now $12. <laughs> and the fabrics are 15% off. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And is that, and that will ha they're already on the website uh, discounted. So that happens at checkout, or no. You see that. You see that when you, before you check out, yes. Okay. That's all for our That's it? All right. We'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you.